Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're un unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be available for you to watch later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of those show recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the shows we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So similar to what would be your so-and-so state library. Um, so we provide services and training and resources and grants and databases and all sorts of things to all types of libraries in the state. <clears throat> so you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, museums, archives, historical societies. Uh, really, our only criteria is it's something to do with libraries. Book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services, products, um, all sorts of things, quite a mixture of presentations. We have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations for us on programs and resources and services we're offering through the commission. But we also bring in, <coughs> excuse me, guest speakers. Um, and that is what we have today. This morning we are talking about, we have dragons at the library. Ah! No, yay. <laughs> and uh, with us say is Rachel Mueller. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and she is from Hastings a Public Library here in Nebraska. Um, and I am just going to, um, this is a uh, hand over to you, Rachel, to tell us all about your awesome reading program that you've got going at the library. Perfect. Yeah, um, I'm really excited to share this with you. Uh, we started Reading Dragons last year. Um, in our first year of implementing this program, we had 201 kids sign up um, and over, I believe it was 100,000 minutes read. Um, this is a program that um, goes throughout the school year. So it is, um, there is a gap in between summer reading. So we run Reading Dragons from September through April. So there's a gap of August for um, kind of a recoup after summer reading. And of course. I have for sure um, in uh, May so that you have a total month without any like major programming going on to get ready for a summer reading. So reading dragons. Um, before we pop into that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. I am the children's programming assistant here at the Hastings Public Library. What that means is everything programming from um, ages uh, infant, so zero to 12, um, is going to be something that I do. So whether that's STEM programming, reading, incent reading incentive programs, summer reading, um, any story times, anything that would um, be applied to those ages is going to be me here at the library. Um, I am a Nebraska certified public librarian. Um, I have um, I'm working on my degree to be able to go for my master's in library science eventually. Um, but we have this really cool program through the Nebraska Library Commission where we can take courses through them and become a certified Nebraska public librarian. So I do hold that um, very much a Disney adult. And then these are all of my little fur babies here on the screen. Um, I live here, um, lived here in Hastings with my husband for um, eight years now. Um, that's him in that upper left corner when we went to Mexico. And so that's just a little bit about me, helps me to talk about myself and get the jitters out when I do um, <laughs> presentations like this. <laughs> nice. So what is Reading Dragons? Reading Dragons is a program that is a card collecting program where the more you read, the more collectible dragon cards you earn. So the way that this is done, um, where did Reading Dragons come from? This actually came from the Dover Public Library located in Dover, Ohio, Mallory and Liz. Um, we're the ones who created this program and created all of the content and um, all of the how-tos to be able to um, implement this in your library. And we've had such great success with it. I wanted to share it with Nebraska libraries and then those of you who are joining from other states. So I just wanted to make sure they got their flowers because I did not create this program. It was created over in Ohio. So the way that they came up with this is 
most of us are familiar with Pokemon cards and card collecting and how popular that is with children. Um, and then they took kind of the idea if, um, so there are, if there's some 90s or earlier kids in the um, webinar today, you might know what Neopets are. I Neopets. had one. I yes. had Neopets. <laughs> they, were so, they were so fun. It was an online game where you got to hatch your little Neopet in like, um, kind of like a Tamagotchi, but it was online and take care of it and like hatch it and grow it from a baby to an adult. So when we take that concept of Neopets and add it to Pokemon cards, that's how Reading Dragons was born. Um, this is our pizza dragon, Raphael, that I drew um, for last year for an exclusive dragon. Um, so we'll be talking about that more later, about how you can use um, stock dragons from the library, which there are tons. You do not have to create your own dragons. Or if you want to create specific program specific to your programming, we had a pizza cat pizza party. If they attended, they got the pizza dragon. So there's so much you can do with this program. But that is where it came from. So I wanted to make sure um, to give the flowers over to Dover Public Library. Um, without them, it wouldn't be possible to do this awesome program. So when you are um, participating in Reading Dragons, you're reading to grow your dragon. There are a family of dragons that you can earn. So you can see there's an egg, a baby, a um, teenager, and an adult. The way that you grow your dragon is by reading. Every card represents 30 minutes of reading um, and is essentially a week of reading. They can um, read faster or if they take a little bit more time, it's no big deal. They have the option to earn up to four re dragon families per month. So it's about 480 minutes of reading. Yes, um, 480 minutes of reading for the month. Um, and the kids love it. And they've been, it's more than we make them read for summer reading, but they, um, mm -hmm. they're they reading for school anyway, and they eat it up. Yeah. Um, and it just makes sure that they're getting basically two hours of reading a week. Um, so every 30 minutes, you're hatching your dragon and growing it from an egg to an adult. Mm -hmm. Um, for challenge setup, so there are multiple dragons. There's a Google Drive that you can get access to that I can share with you that has um, printable PDFs of dragon cards. And you can choose out of these, I would say that there's probably 85 different dragons. There's unicorns, there's all different um, uh, mythological creatures that are part of this program. And so when I set up this program, um, I start setting it up basically during summer reading right before for the next year. So I start thinking about it, started thinking about it in May, really getting it done in June when I have extra breathing time for through summer reading. Um, and August is my major prep time for challenge. So it takes a little bit of time um, mm -hmm. when you're first getting it set up because you're picking all your dragons that you want to use. Um, you can earn up to, um, for us, it's 32 dragons that you earn and you start with three dragon cards. Um, that you get just for signing up. So you get three families. So it's a total of 12 cards that um, when they sign up, they get a tracker, a checklist, which is what you can see here, and a and three sets of dragon families to start their deck. So that helps them get a little bit excited that they don't have to wait to get those cards in their hands. So our starter cards are not on our checklist this year. You can decide. It's really, um, all of these templates are on Canva. Um, from I love Public Canva, Public. so easy to make so many cool things. <laughs> All of the PNGs and um, of the of the eggs and the cards are available to you through this Google Drive, so you can just drag and drop into Canva and create your custom checklist. So this is our checklist for this year, our 32. Um, we have 16 dragons and 16 unicorns. The first year we just did dragons, and this year we're incorporating the unicorns as well. Um, and the way we did our checklist is kids were counting out on our first checklist. I, I just had the 32 dragon eggs on it. And they were like, well, which one will I earn in December? And so they were counting it out. So this year I kind of improved the checklist a little bit and made it month by month to show those four dragons that they are able to earn per month. Um, with Reading Dragons, you can join at any time. So if um, they're just hearing about it this month, they can totally join the program and backtrack or read um, and um, read extra to earn their September dragons. They're never going to just not be able to earn those dragons, um, but they can't move 
forward. So it helps that, that longevity of um, making sure that the kiddos stay in the program all eight months of the program, as opposed to just like zipping through like some of our kids do. I know everybody's got kids that like it's the first day of summer reading. And they're like, I'm here for my prize because they've already um, did it all in one day. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So that helps with the longevity of the program, um, keeps them reading all year long. It's, you block the dragons into a month so they can't earn them until the next month comes up, but you can always backtrack. We also use Beanstack at our library and create this mm -hmm. program um, with Beanstack, um, which is a um, just like a reading tracking app and website. Mm -hmm. um, but you can do this all with paper. You don't have to add any like technological tracking to your reading dragons as well. So this is what the challenge tracker looks like, and it just explains at the top that earn a new card for every 30 minutes you read and you complete a dragon family by reading a total of 120 minutes you can earn up to 16 cards or four dragon families a month and track each 30 minutes in the boxes for the month and bring it to the second floor desk to collect your cards so we've got september's dragons and we've got our little boxes into um egg baby teen and adult with a little 30 minute just to remind them so every 30 minutes they can check off and once they've completed that row, that um, horizontal row, they can come pick up their cards. So we're not going to, let's, let's say we've got adventure for the first week of September. They read 30 minutes, they want their baby card. We're not going to do that. We're gonna have them earn that whole dragon family, that 120 minutes before they can keep, before they can pick up their card. That's just easier um, when we have the cards printed and cut from the print ready PDFs in the Google file. Um, then you can just hand them the whole family and you're not paying you're not having to keep track of which kid has only gotten the egg and the baby you just know that nope here you've read 120 minutes here's your whole dragon family so you um, get four cards still just get them all at once just get them all at once yeah so um that's what um they recommended from dover public library and that's what we've implemented here and it works a lot easier than i read 30 minutes here's and then you have um basically if you ever collected cards or Pokemon cards, baseball cards, you have the binder with nine pockets and you've got a family in each pocket. So you can just take the family out and hand it. You're not having to pay attention to if it's got only a teenager or an adult in there, it's just the whole family at once. Um, we have a color coded for month, that's just for fun. Um, but that is how the tracker looks on the inside. The front just has a cute little reading dragons um, logo, and then we use an eight and a half by 14 folded piece of paper to have kind of a larger substantial cardstock tracker. Um, since this program does go for eight months, it kind of lives up to the wear and tear a little bit easier than um, our regular <laughs> but, um, printer paper that we use for our trackers in the summer. Um. So uh, you've heard me talk about unicorns a little bit. So you can incorporate reading dragons and friends um we've got unicorns there are sphinx there are griffins um some of the libraries um also add in um cerberuses and all different mythical creatures um which is really fun because then you can um make it last and make it new every year um so like i said last year we did just dragons we did 32 dragons and with the three starters so it was 35 um and then this year we did 16 brand new dragons because there are so many dragons in those print ready pdfs on the google drive um and then we added 16 unicorns and then the next year i'll add the griffins and it just adds to the longevity of the program without having to repeat um eventually you'll have to repeat unless you create your own dragons and color your own ones um which i'll show you sometimes some kids might want to get the old one that they saw it's like you know it's one of the original dragons and that gives it more uh exactly yeah like it's, it's part of the collecting i found this old original one <laughs> more exclusive so um mm -hmm. and they can keep their decks and just add to their decks from last year or they can just start new um a big question i had when we um started reading dragon i call it like season two um was like well i did it last year and it's like, oh no, it's all new dragons and it's all new unicorns. And that really gets kids excited mm -hmm. um, to continue okay. the program. Um, so you can continue to add um, 
all of the different mythological creatures. Um, there are different programs that you can do with Reading Dragons. And one of them um, is just kind of built into how the cards are designed, um, which is a rock, paper, scissors style game. It's kind of, it's very like mad, um, I believe like Magic the Gathering inspired mm -hmm. with um, the color system here. Um, they can play these games with their cards. So the more cards they collect, the better chance they have in winning their games. So you'll see in the background of the cards, there are different um, colors. So there's red backgrounds, green and blue, and red beats green, green beats blue, blue beats red. And there are rules to the game. There's a easier um, game. So we have this program going for our five to 12 year olds. Um, so those five to eights kind of have an easier time with the rock, paper, scissors, where you get to look at your cards and secretly choose it and flip it. And you'll see who wins um, based on the color. Whereas with rock, paper, scissors, war, um, it's going to incorporate not only the color, um, but the age of the dragon um, that you can to decide who wins. So there's that. Pro we had programs where we had reading dragons play hours. So not only was it kind of a passive reading program that they could collect and be a part of, they can come to these play hours and we would play the game. Um, and then we ended the um, year in April with a Reading Dragons tournament where we gave out dragon books to the winners. Um, so that's an easy program that you can uh, incorporate on top of the reading program, or you can keep it totally passive and just have it be read and collect your cards. Um, one of the other programs we had was a coloring contest. This is how we created mm -hmm. our starters for the year. Um, so the first year we didn't do a coloring contest because it was brand new and I just picked three starters. But for this year, we um, did a coloring contest and this coloring sheet is part of the Google Drive that you get access to when doing the program. And um, you just I just put this out in July for the month of July and I had 71 entries. The kids really enjoyed um, being able to design their own dragons. And these were our three winners. I chose the top 10 and then I had staff vote for which ones their favorite ones were. Um, and so the original drawings are here on the left. And then I put them into an app called Procreate and I drew them um, so that we would have a digital file to be able to turn, turn into cards. Um, so we turned them into these digital versions of each of the dragons and they, um, were our awesome starters for the year and the kids really enjoyed it and we're very excited to be able to be um, really a part of the setup of the program. Um, when you set up your program and are choosing your dragons, you can just use the print ready PDFs. You do not have to be um, somebody who like digitally draws or creates in that way. But you can. Yeah, that was a question. Actually, I was wondering how do we draw these? I mean, I don't have artistic skill. <laughs> yes, for sure. And so there are multiple, like, there are so many print ready PDFs within the Google Drive that you can just choose. Um, what I do is I download the PDF from the Google Drive and then I choose the dragons I want and I create my own, um, like, print ready PDF of just the dragons I'm using within mm -hmm. Canva. And that way I'm like, I can just label it Dragons 2024, 2025. And I don't have to keep going back to the Google Drive and um, searching through the long list of dragons um, to find the dragons that I'm using. Um, that's really easy. You just download the PDF and put it into Canva and drag and drop the dragons mm -hmm. that you use. So who's so creating the dragons that are, are in there? Is that from Dover or where is this coming from? So main, mainly from Dover. But um, you'll see if you can, I don't know if you can see on your screen, um, there's a little gray um, bar across the top of the print ready PDFs that say which library made them. So, oh, you, so other, all sorts of libraries are contributing to. Yeah, so this is like a big group effort now where um, you can create your own dragons, make the, and all of these things to create your own are in Canva. Like it's so simple. They have the, um, the card backgrounds that is a Canva. Um, document so that you can create your dragon and just slap it on top of a card and then you just make it into a card print sheet. Um, 
it's all very user friendly if you want to create your own cards but if you don't want to create your own cards there's no need to mm -hmm. um so for coloring your custom dragons there is a um in the google drive they've got a video on how to do that um using a app called fire alpaca which is kind of like paint mixed with um adobe illustrator um mm -hmm. it's really user friendly and um every layer so like if i just wanted to color the body pink i could just click body and then use a big like paintbrush and just color it pink so it's very um user friendly you do not have to draw the dragon from scratch you're just like coloring it in um so if you do want to um color your own dragons that is the best way um to do so um they also have the photoshop draw, um, files that you can use or um like i like to put them into procreate because then i can use an apple pencil to have a little bit more control when i'm drawing my own dragons but that's just um kind of an extra thing you can do there are so many cards available that you don't have to um color custom dragons or add custom dragons to your program at all so cost of cost of the program um this is how much i i spent um personally um not personally but with the library budget um on the program last year and um including all of the card stock i used um holographic single-sided laminate so basically like single-sided sticker paper and um would make a sheet hollow so that when they got their cards they could look through and be like oh, i got a hollow teen dragon and it um added to the fun so i um bought cardstock holographic laminate binders and court card sorting sheets and all of that in total was 211 dollars for the year with 201 participants it cost about a dollar um per child mm -hmm. to put on this program you would have to have that laminating machine to do them to get no, them um just honestly i'll grab i'll grab a sheet and show you Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm back. So this is self sealing laminate just from Amazon. Oh, nice. Okay. It's hollow, and you print your um, PDF of all of the cards. So let's say you want to make just the teenagers hollow um, just to make sure that you don't want every card to be hollow because you want it to be special. Sure, um, sure. You've got your card stock of the teenage teenager in front of you. You just peel this off and this is sticky. And then you just set it on top and it makes the cards hollow and it's really fun. Nice. Yeah. Um, but the cost of the program is about um, a dollar per child. That doesn't include staff time. Um, Staff time, it's pretty heavy on the front end because you're um, going to be printing all your starter cards and then mm. I just do month by month. So I'm printing all my starter cards, I'm printing all my September cards, I'm getting them all cut. So it's a little heavy on the front end. Um, but then I just do month to month and every week I check in and I say, um, if I've got at least 10 sets of a family, I'm not gonna print more. Um, if I get under like one sheet, so nine families, then I'm gonna print probably 18 more. So, and that's gonna be about two sheets per age. So um, you can um, basically do like a little weekly check-in. It takes you about five to 10 minutes a week to make sure, oh, do I need more Mer Dragon cards? Yes, I do. Print them really quickly, cut them, sort them, put them in the binder. Um, then I take probably two hours, um, the week or two before the next month starts and I get 32 dragons ready um and i put and i print them and i get them cut for the next month i've got the kids that are like oh we've got the month done by the third that they come and get them in but then you can just do a little weekly check do i need to print more cards um that helps keep the cost down um because um and i'm sure we've all experienced this with reading programs you get a lot of sign up but not a lot of follow through and so mm -hmm. if i look at yeah. um out of that two the 201 kids 150 completed the program but only like 90 of them actually picked up all of their cards mm -hmm. and um so that way i wasn't spending the time cutting 200 making sure i had 200 of each dragon i just kind of kept a weekly update of like 
if we didn't, if we had 10 or less, I was going to print like 18 more sets of cards is how that, how I worked it out for me. But you can work out your organization, how it works for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does this compare? So how does this compare um, participant wise to summer reading? Um, we had, if we just did the same age groups, we had about equal participation with um, summer reading. Um, I would say, um, yeah, just comparing age groups, because we had 600 and something, um, a little over 600 participate in summer reading last year. And um, a good chunk of that is that five to 12 year old range. And so um, summer reading maybe had 75 to 100 more kids, but um, we did a kickoff party when we um, started the program. We had a Reading Dragons kickoff. Um, I had a presentation. I explained what the program was. Got a, um, had a couple like activities and um, had like sign up right in their room so that they could sign up and get their cards and their trackers. And that really helped um, kind of kick off the growth of um, Reading Dragons. Whereas this year, um, we're uh, sitting at about 75 after the first month. Last year we were about at 125 um, and we didn't do the kickoff party. So I definitely recommend making mm. sure you have those programs and events that are Reading Dragons kind of centric um, when you're first starting um, to give it that like oomph and kickoff excitement. Get their attention, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's something special coming up, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, does anybody have any other questions about the program itself? Like I said, it's all um, Google Drive based. It's all print ready PDFs. Um, the biggest portion is going to be that setup for you. So it's going to be buying the cardstock, printing the trackers, printing the cards and getting them cut and then just organizing them into binders. But once you have that done, um, it's a really easy program to keep going throughout the year. Yeah, I think that's common of many of the programs that we do. <laughs> it's all that prep work and then it's done in half an hour. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, yeah, let's see. Does anybody yeah, anybody have any questions? Yeah, we've got plenty of time here. Um, if you do have questions, um, type into the questions section of the GoToWebinar interface. Um, anything you want to know more about, anything you have um, want to see, cover, go back to any other slides. Um, if you've done something like this at your library, um, how's it gone? Um, uh, we do have some questions coming in. Let's see here. Uh, someone wants to know, is there a particular, is there a reading list to use to participate? Um, um, any I've particular titles or? I've never incorporated a reading list. They can read whatever they want. Um, a big part of it is like they are, they already have a reading goal and a reading list from school. So it's uh -huh. kind of like double dipping for them so that they get, um, they might be getting an incentive at school to like read the, for our state, it's the Golden Sower Award. Um, so they're reading the, those right. Golden Sowers and they're getting the um, credit for school, but then they can also just, it's a time-based program only. So you don't, you can read whatever you would like. Um, as long as you've read 30 minutes, you can check off that box. Mm -hmm. uh, that is definitely something you can incorporate as you can create like a dragon's reading list or a unicorn's reading list for yeah, sure. sure. You want to promote certain titles and other certain on certain months or something. Yeah. Um, so that's another question about, since you said they, they, you, how it could be, they're already reading certain things for school. Um, do you work with the coordinate with the school on promoting this to in the school? Yes. I've gone to, um, I go to our local schools and um, present mainly to the elementary ages. Um, the uh, Some of the middle schoolers are 12, but I just kind of go into the elementary schools and mm -hmm. I'll do like a little dragon story time and then talk to them about the um, the collecting of the cards. And that's what gets them right away is that mm -hmm. um, they want those collectible dragon cards. And I'll bring, or excuse me, I'll bring um, cards with me and give them each like a starter card so that they can show show it to their parents and like bring trackers with me um but they can bring home with them for the day and then they can i had a lot of signups that way that they were like oh we saw this at school and we wanted to come sign up and then we were able to get them all their starter cards when they came into the library sure. um so this could be um fiction non-fiction anything that they want to yeah it's just minutes based so it's just we're just rewarding them for the for the action of reading 
Yeah, nice, nice. Um, let's see, do you know, um, now I know you said this is the thing you do during the school year and you had your separate summer reading program, but do you know any libraries that have adapted summer reading, um, using this for summer reading instead of doing it during the school year? Um, not that I have seen. A lot of people um, take a break. Um, there is a program that you can do within the Google Drive called like the dragons go on vacation where you, you've got letters of where the dragons are and like pictures of them sitting on pool floaties and things like that. Um, that is something we've tossed around here of um, creating or picking dragons that are exclusive to summer. Mm. Um, haven't tried it, but I'm sure that it would be a good way to just incorporate it all year and have it be your summer reading program and then have exclusive summer dragons yeah that would be okay, a i did see on some of your slides there's obviously like the holiday themed yeah, so things like to certain time of year have certain like uh, we've got yeah three sphinx and um that was really fun um and um you can kind of see on my checklist here in December, I've got Candy Cane, Gingerbread, um, Mela Kaliki Maka, and Clara from the Nutcracker. Um, so you can definitely theme out your dragons. Absolutely. There's so many in those print-ready PDFs. Um, mm -hmm. And then what I did um, with exclusive dragons to draw people into programming is, like I said, I had that pizza dragon for my pizza cat pizza party. And the only way that you could earn that is by coming to the party. Um, we did after doing a couple of exclusive dragons and parents not being able to make it to specific programming um start doing alternative tasks so you could either come to the program or check out a beat the cat book that way it was accessible but then we just had it only available for those like two weeks so um and that really helped like garner excitement throughout the program um so that could be something that you could do for summer as well yeah they said thanks they're looking for a new summer thing to do something more yeah oh yeah i know sure. some libraries do the, the the collaborative summer library program theme some do their own themes oh um, yeah you could there's totally so many like, different yeah kind of shrink it down to that eight weeks nine weeks of summer reading and um have different dragons for them to earn throughout the summer that would be so fun yeah yeah absolutely um but lots of people are asking about the the google drive and the pdfs you mentioned um, yeah. Do you want, if you, um, so is this something, is this a Google Drive that's just like public out there that anyone can get to? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, asking about, are you asking about the Google Drive? Okay, yeah. Um, um, it, is this something I, that's just publicly out there that everyone can access or do you need to specifically share it to them? So I would need to share it to you. Um, okay. So my contact information is on the screen. Um, okay. If you want to email me. Um, I can email you um, and add you to the drive. Oh, right, you'd have to be added to it. Okay, great. So yeah, so for those of you that wanna do this, um, there is Rachel's email there and you can reach out to her and she can get you connected to all of the arguments that are in the PDFs there, yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, and someone wants to know how do if we wanted to do they miss the first 10 minutes if we want to do this how we get involved i guess getting that pdf there is the getting into that drive is the first is the first step yeah and yeah. so when you get into the drive um there are a couple videos on if you want to learn how to make your own um let me pop out of my presentation right here and i can just show you yeah sure the drive while we're on um just a shared drive that has different labeled, and every we can see my screen, right? I'm just making yes, sure. Yes, yep, 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 we've seen it. Um, that has labeled folders, that has tutorials, the printable cards, the Color Me templates. Um, this is where you can share your own cards and they'll be added to those printable cards. Programming ideas. Um, I can show you these printable cards so you can see how easy it is to incorporate. Um, so we've got, Dragon cards, Cerberus, Griffin, oh, so Antelopes. <laughs> yeah, there's so many different magical creatures that you can incorporate into reading dragons. Um, and then they just have these dragons as print ready PDFs separated by um, like the letter of the dragon's name because mm. there are so many to choose from. So we'll just pop into A through F here. And so I just, when I started the program and I, um, get it ready every year. 
I go through all of these dragons and I pick the ones I like. The 32, I'm like, oh, I love Galaxy. I love Glow Shroom. Um, I love all of these ones. I pick 32 dragons I like. And then I download these PDFs, upload them into Canva and just drag and drop the dragons I'm going to use into a new document. Um, that way you don't have to go through 146 pages looking for the dragons that you are um, wanting. So actually it opened the G through O. So we've got, these are what the little print um, ready PDFs look like. And you just print them. I use like a dragon scale background that I just made on Canva and print them back and forth. Mm -hmm. You don't have to make a background if you don't want to. It just adds to the, um, just kind of like the idea that it's like a real trading card. I'll show you a couple I've got with me. So this is, you can see me in my little, this is um, that Raphael pizza dragon and he's hollow. And then I just okay. on Canva put a dragon oh, scale. Cool. Oh, I love that. Yeah. When I put them back and forth, they look like real little cards. But you just print these back and forth with your background or however you'd like. Mm -hmm. And then you just take a little paper cutter. I have my own that stays at my desk now. Um, the little <laughs> zippy cutter. Mm -hmm. Yep. And trim them down and put them within their families. So here's Galaxy's family. We've got his egg, baby, teen, and adult. So you print all four of those pages, get them cut, stack them together, and slide them into those um, um, little card separators and then their families are ready to go to be handed out for when kids earn them. Nice. Um, it looks like somebody said they, they found that, um, it looks like the Andover Public Library's website, they have a Google form you can use to sign up um, to okay. get, they will then add you to the, and I've got the link here, I'll include the link when I do the archive um, recording for this. They've got a Google form to get a link, get the link to Google Drive and a Reading Dragons Facebook group apparently too. Perfect, yeah. Um, and it's easy, it's doverlibrary.org slash dragons. It's a pretty simple URL, but I will con include the link. Um, I'll add it to the show description so people can pop to that as well to get access to this drive that she's, that, uh, that Rachel's showing y'all. Yeah. And there's, yeah, all sorts of print ready PDFs of all different um, dragons and um, magical creatures. Um, these are the Color Me templates that you can open with Photoshop or Procreate. Um, and then there, or Fire Alpaca, which is really nice. It's a Fire Alpaca is free and you can just download it to your desktop. Um, and then they've got video tutorials. It's all within this Google Drive and um, all of the tutorials are here. Um, it's great library sharing this in so much detail and so much help there. I mean, that's something we do all the time. That's why we do some of these shows of people just sharing a program they're doing that they can then recreate um at their own library and they're just doing so much in here is yeah. amazing. <laughs> it's so there's so much information for you um to be able to easily incorporate this at your library within the google drive yeah um we had someone who came in a little late i know we had a few other people that came in late too i was keeping track of the numbers um the question about handing out the cards and you did explain this before about um how they get the cards, um, they get the egg cards at first or just the tracker and then they get the entire family of cards after reading for the full hours and that is the way it's done, yes. <laughs> yes, yep. Um, so we have binders that um, I've separated all the cards into that are up at our second floor children's desk. Um, we've got a starter card binder and a current monthly binder um, as well as a little like um, organizational um, bin that's got trackers and checklists in them. So when they sign up, they receive a checklist, a tracker, and their three starter dragons. And then as they read, they have to complete that 120 minutes to earn the family. Um, they can either read for the whole month and get four families at once, or they can come in weekly to get there. It's totally up to the parents and how they want, how much time they want to be at the library picking up <laughs> dragon cards. Um, and then we just organize them so each family is in a pocket of like basically baseball card organizational um like filing things mm -hmm. yeah yeah um i'm blanking on the word for them um but they're like the little sheets that you put baseball cards in so we mm -hmm. just put four cards in each pocket 
And so it's like, oh, I've earned adventure. You can just grab the whole family and be like, here we go. And um, it's the simplest way to make sure that they get their whole family. And then you can just look in the binder and see, oh, I've only got nine left because one sheet is nine cards. It's time to print more. It's more as yeah, so print them as you go, because you never know how many you might end up handing out. Yeah. yeah. Um someone wants to see the card again. I'm not sure if like the in the, the yeah. Yeah, those are some of the cards. So they're just sticky laminated and um yeah, I kept hollow ones for myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just did a dragon scale background I found on Canva and printed them back in front with the PDFs. Mm -hmm. um, this is a Waldo. This is a really fun program that we did. We did Where's Waldo Dragon Coins that I made on our laser cutter that we have. Um, or you can get like a dragon plushie and hide it in your second floor. And if mm -hmm. they find the dragon plushie or the coin, they can bring it to the second desk and they get an exclusive Waldo card where you can hide like a little cutout of Waldo around. And if they find Waldo, they get the Waldo card. Yeah, so all the cards get put into some sort of laminated sheet, but just some of them are the hologram, holographic ones. Um, I don't laminate the regular cards. I just leave them as regular card stock. Uh, okay, so just this, this so they're, so they're yeah, that, that shiny to them. Cool. All right. Um, anybody have any other questions? I know some people came in. If you have anything you want to know about or have her show anything, um, um, I'll say right now, we will have um, a link to the recording will be available afterwards. So you can watch all of this and see everything that was done. Um, I'll include a link to Dover Public Library's page and the slides as well. You'll have access to the slides. We'll have a link to the um, Canvas slides that um, Rachel put together here too. So you can go back and look at that as well um, afterwards. Um, so uh, so you do this up through age 12. Um, has a dean of other libraries doing it for older teens? Or, um, um, and some, or adults, possibly. I know um, lots of adults are collectors as well, too. I am. <laughs> right. um, I've, I've gotten so, some interest from teens, and um, there are some adults that are like, oh my gosh, I would totally do that if I, you know, when I was younger. Um, we haven't opened it up to um, the, those higher ages. We have different programming for them. So we've kind of, we've mm -hmm. got a thousand books before kindergarten for that zero to four, reading sure. dragon from five to 12. Um, and um, I think it's like a hundred. We're in, um, starting to incorporate a teen and adult program that we um, that they can do throughout the school year. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's totally something. If if you've got interest, it's it's definitely something mm -hmm. you can open to different ages. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, people of all maybe not the zero to four year olds, but <laughs> pretty much any people of all ages are into collecting all sorts of things. Um, adults as well, you know, older teens, cards, uh, uh, figures, um, all, you know, whatever you're into. <laughs> um, sure. So I think definitely you could, um, if you have do an adult reading program or something, um, it could definitely be um, modified for that, sure. Mm -hmm. And you said, I did see on the Dover site, like I said, they said there's a Facebook group um, that could be a way, a place to possibly ask too, to see if anyone else has done that. Um, there's a link on the Dover Public Library page to a Facebook group for it. Yeah, and I found out about this in the programming um, programming librarian interest group. Um, somebody had posted about having their first Reading Dragons event, and that's how I um, mm -hmm. was able to access all of this information. So I was just really excited to share it with more people because. It is such a fun and engaging program. It is very cool. Yes, I am. I, I think it's a lot of fun. I would have loved to do this when I was a kid, or even now. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The programming librarian interest group, or um, there's uh, through American Library Association, they have a programming librarian newsletter too that I get uh, to keep up on what's going on too. Um, I highly recommend signing up for that. Just go and Google it, programming librarian ALA. Um, it has uh, obviously lots of ideas, but also um, reports on what libraries are doing, like what you saw, and grant opportunities too for funding for various um, programming related things. So you, if you want to do a certain project or program or something, um, lots of information in there about that as well. They always share. Yeah, and it's um, it kind of can be a little overwhelming at first, but once you get everything printed, it's so simple to run and it's pretty much mm -hmm. passive unless you add those extra layers to it. So mm -hmm. you can make it as small and or as large as you want it to be. 
Um, but yeah, our kids absolutely love it. I totally recommend this program. Absolutely, it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, it looks like our questions are slowing down. Um, so we could do uh, think about wrapping up for today. Um, anybody have any last minute desperate questions they want to ask of Rachel? Type into the question section. We've got some thank yous coming in. Wonderful program. Um, uh, definitely gonna try and use this at our library. <laughs> Awesome. So, um, awesome. And there is Rachel's email, of course. Give her, you know, reach out to her if you do want to chat with her um, more about what she's been doing. All right. I am going to pull presenter control back to my screen to, sh to um, wrap things up here. Let's see here. There we go. So, here is the Dover site that someone shared. Um, I had to scroll down. It's doverlibrary.org slash dragons. Um, and it just talks all about the program. But if you scroll, there's the reading tracker and the card examples, uh, places who have been doing it. Done it. Yeah, look at that. Um, and there's Hastings there in Nebraska. <laughs> uh, but then if you scroll down enough, here's where there is how do I get access? Fill out, there's a Google form to get a link to Google Drive and to join the Facebook group. Um, and I will include the link to this when I do the uh, archive page. So uh, speaking of the archive, um, I'm gonna go back to our main Encompass Live website. Um, if you use whatever your your uh, search engine of choice is and type in um, Encompass Live, you'll find our main page here and our archive page. Here's our upcoming shows for um, the rest of the year and even going into 2025. Yep, we're starting to get scheduled all that far. Um, but beneath that, we'll have our archives here. So, um, but I'll, first I want to say, yeah, thank you so much, Rachel. This is an awesome presentation. I was really excited when I saw that you had you reached out about doing this presentation. I think you, did you do this at the um, youth retreat or? I did the uh, music and story time. Music and wondering, time. that's right. We have a youth services retreat every year and I always uh, keep up on what's going on there. Yeah, so this is a great session. Um, lots of good resources and information and I think it'd be really fun for a lot more libraries start doing it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and uh, you have dragons you can do other things too um, since there's so many different types of cards you could do mm -hmm. but the archive will be here for everyone to watch um, should be done um, up and ready by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest uh, as long as go to webinar and YouTube cooperate with me our recordings go on the Library Commission's YouTube channel um, we'll link to the slides for sure you can send me the link to your Canva there the sharing link whenever you get a chance um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording is available um, and it'll be this one has slides yeah just like this one from last week there'll be a link to the recording a link to the slides as well as linked to that Dover page that I showed you as well, we'll add that to the session page for this show. Um, while we're here, there is a search feature. If you wanna see if you've done a show on any particular topic that you are interested in, um, you can search our full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want just something very current. Um, that is because this is our full show archives and I'm not gonna scroll all the way down. If you see over here, you can see this is a really huge list, but this is our show archives going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January, 2009. 2009, so we're at what, 16 years now. <laughs> and we have, um, all of our show archives are here. <laughs> um, so just do pay attention when you're watching anything older to the original broadcast date. They all have a date letting you know when the show first happened. Um, some shows will be um, perfectly fine to watch, good, useful information, stand the test of time, no problem. But some things will become old and outdated. Um, resources may have changed drastically, might not exist anymore. Uh, links might be broken. Um, people may work at a different library, a different institution than when they presented to for us 10 years ago. So just take, keep that in mind when you are watching any of our shows, our archive shows. But um, this is something librarians do. We keep things for historical purposes. And as long as we have a place to host all of our show archives, which right now is all, they're all on our YouTube channel, we will um, keep them all out there for people to watch. Awesome. Yeah. So we do do a weekly show. You can see here um, next week we'll be talking about letters about literature. 
Um, this is a program we do here in Nebraska, but it's done in all sorts of states across the country. Uh, it was originally something from the Library of Congress, now it's just done individually by the Centers for the Book and various states. Um, so if you're not from Nebraska, check your state for this, but um, our program is starting up for the um, year, for this year. Uh, so come and see about how students in the teen, um, yeah, kids and teens, fourth through 12th grade can write to any authors they're interested in. So please do sign up for that and any of our other upcoming shows. Um, and the last thing I want to mention is, in addition to this weekly online webinar we do here at the Library Commission, I, uh, we also host and do the Big Talk from Small Libraries online conference um, using the same GoToWebinar software here. This is an annual conference we do. It's always the last Friday of February. Um, and the call for speakers is open. This is all of our presenters at Big Talk from Small Libraries are from libraries with an FTE or population served of 10,000 or less. So if you are one of those small libraries and you want to share something you've done, um, you can um, sub please do uh, submit a proposal to us. Um, the deadline is December 13th, and um, the conference itself will be on Friday, February 28th, all online, just like we're doing here. If you want to see what's been done before, we have all of our previous conferences um, recordings um, here, going back to our first one in 2012. So please do, um, do that. Oh, we also have a um, social media, uh, sorry, Facebook page. We have links here. We have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. If you want to use that, um, if you'd like to use that, give us a like. Uh, we promote, we post out when we're, um, shows are coming up, um, when recordings are available. Here's the announcement of the recording from yesterday's. We use the hashtag EncompLive, a little abbreviation of our name, when we go on um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram that we have through the Library Commission. So keep up, up with us on social media. All right, uh, I don't see any other last minute questions, just more thank you, thank you presenters. I love the program, pretty sure I'm going to use it. Great. <laughs> All right, so I think that is it for today. Thank you everyone for being here with us. Uh, thank you, Rachel, for sharing about your dragons at your library. It was very, very cool. Of course, thank you. Yeah, and hopefully we'll see all of you on a future episode of Encompass Live. So long. <laughs>